Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me for this morning. Uh, my name is Vinod Kumar Narsiman. I am a product manager in the Amazon AppStream team. Today, I'll be giving a brief overview of Amazon AppStream service. I also have two customers who are using AppStream in production with me, sharing about their AppStream journey. What's Amazon AppStream? Amazon AppStream is a fully managed AWS service that enables customers to run desktop, Windows desktop applications in cloud and stream them to any browser on any device. Your users can connect and access their application instantly using any modern HTML5 browser. Your applications are running on dedicated virtual machines, or what we call instances in EC2 world, on the cloud, safe and secure. Your applications get all the compute, memory, GPU needs, and our service capture the application frames and stream them as encrypted pixels to your end users' browsers. How does AppStream work? Basically, you install your applications that you want to deliver to your users' browsers in an admin desktop, just like you would normally install. And then we use your image containing your applications to launch instances that can seamlessly connect to your network, to your storage solutions. You can enable your users to access their applications using your existing identity solutions. So there is no need to migrate your network or your storage or your identity resources to use AppStream. You manage your applications centrally. You patch your applications or you upgrade your applications to a latest version only once. And your users accessing those applications using the browser instantly receive your updates. Let me briefly give you a demo of how AppStream works, and we'll then get into the details of the service. As you see, I'm using a Windows machine. Uh, this would be a single sign-on scenario. I'm using Google Identity, where I am an employee in an organization. This identity can be anything like Okta, Ping, Active Directory, Federation Services, whatever identity service provider you use to enable single sign-on federation to third-party web applications within your company. So I sign in. On top, I have all my Google applications, but my admin also has provided me an uh, AppStream catalog, which if I click on it, automatically federates me to a catalog of applications that I can instantly access using the browser. You have a list of graphics applications here, but of course you can use AppStream to deliver business applications as well. As you see, the catalog page is branded with your own uh, assets. It has your own company logo. You can provide help links at the bottom, support links or links to product marketing pages that your users want. And uh, you can apply your own color themes so as to give a very native, family look and feel to your end users. And let me go ahead and click on the application. The session starts right in the browser. There are various controls available for your users to interact with their application. This experience of loading application settings, the details of which I'll get into as I go along in the session. As you see, uh, Blender is a desktop application. It requires a Windows machine, but you can interact with Blender just like a web application without having to download or install it on your local machine. This enables you to use whatever device you want, be it a Chromebook, be it a MacBook, be it an Ubuntu machine or a Windows PC, but still be able to use all the Windows applications that you want to use for your daily day-to-day -day activities. I have access to my catalog. This enables me to launch multiple applications at the same time. And uh, there are also controls available for uploading files to my, from my local computer to the remote session. If I want to work on a document, I can download the file back. Uh, I can also have my own native storage solutions. To this session, I have linked my Google Drive account. That means I can access my Google Doc files that I have stored in my document and use it with the applications in AppStream. And within a folder, I can add a new folder. I can upload files from my local computer. And if I want to switch between the local applications, I can seamlessly switch between multiple applications at the same time. By clicking on this view, you get the list of application tiles that are open. If I want to have a distraction-free 
experience working with my applications, I can switch from full screen to full screen mode, thereby giving a complete view for interacting me with my applications. And at a time, I can revert back to my normal session. There are settings available for changing uh, regional settings. So if you want to use a French keyboard instead of an English keyboard, if you want to see uh, your characters and text and symbols in your own time zone format, uh, or if you're in your own locale, you have options to change that dynamically. And once you're done, you can end the session simply, and then you're, you're back to your, you can provide a redirect page where the user can be redirected to at the end of the session. The redirect page can simply be the SAML login page to which the user can redirect it to, so if he can sign in back, if he can, st to start a new session. Coming back to the benefits of AppStream 2, why as a customer you want to use AppStream 2.0? AppStream 2 is a fully managed service. This means all the resources, the streaming instances, the session, the lifecycle of these instances and your user sessions, uh, all is managed by AppStream. You don't have to invest in procuring hardware. You don't have to invest in buying management tools or endpoint security tools to manage your own streaming environment, just like how you're doing traditionally in your on-prem environment. You simply import your applications. You can create a streaming environment in a few clicks. You can define an initial capacity and get going. Instantly, your users can access your application from a browser. The service is secure by default. The applications are running on cloud. Uh, another benefit of using AppStream is many customers have already migrated or in the process of migrating their data to AWS. However, the applications that are accessing this data are still on on-prem network or in local devices. This means your users who are accessing large data sets through your applications, let's say a business intelligence application or MATLAB or not GIS Pro, there is a lot of lagginess because of the transport of data between AWS and your local devices. By putting your applications on AppStream, you're moving your clients or your applications closer to your data, thereby eliminating all the lagginess or that is caused by the data transport, and your apps and data are both secure. It doesn't leave the AWS cloud. There's only encrypted pixels that are sent to the end user's devices. So there are no more apps installed on devices, no more access of your data to the apps that are installed on local devices. AppStream instances are non-persistent in nature. This means every user session is supported by a dedicated, fresh new instance to begin with, and at the end of the session, that instance is terminated. And when the user starts a new session, he basically gets a brand new instance. The service scales on demand, like any other AWS service. You can simply get started by creating an environment with 10 instances that will support 10 concurrent sessions. But you can instantly scale to thousands of users uh, across the globe. And you only pay for the resources that you consume. You can, you can build a streaming environment today, use it for say 10 days if you want to conduct a training workshop or an enterprise customer demo, and you can simply shut down your environment after 10 days or after a month. That means you only paid for the resources that you consumed for that 10 days. There's no pre-planning of involved, there's no forecasting involved, there's no over-provisioning involved in your traditional models where you have to invest and procure all the necessary hardware or VDI infrastructure necessary for setting up a streaming environment. The service gives you a very simple pricing model. Uh, we charge you for the running instances. We charge you per hour for every instance that is running. And uh, once you're not using the environment, you don't pay anything. And there is uh, RDS SAL user fees component, where every user who starts a session has to pay a user fees. But however, that fees can also be waived off if you can bring your existing RDS SAL licenses. Or for qualifying educational institution, that RDS SAL price falls from $4.19 per user per month to 44 cents. AppStream seamlessly integrates with your existing IT environment. You don't have to migrate or change anything. AppStream instances are attached to your VPC. This means your applications running on these streaming instances have access to your network resources, such as file shares, database servers, licensing servers, as long as they are accessible through your VPC. You can connect your VPC and your on-prem data center using VPN peering or tools like AWS Direct Connect. AppStream provides a range of identity options, which I will get into, uh, that enables you to seamlessly uh, enable authentication and authorization to your users, to their application, using their existing credentials without having to build anything new. 
and Active Directory integration is available. AppStream instances can be standalone instances if you don't want to invest in an Active Directory, or AppStream instances can be joined to a domain. Thereby, applications can have access to domain resources. You can expose domain resources like network printers or network uh, domain-based file shares as storage options to your users. And uh, you can also enable your users to access internet site that relies on domain credentials. The application management is extremely simple with AppStream. We provide you an admin desktop, what we call Image Builder. You install your applications, you create a golden image, and then we use that golden image to launch thousands of instances to support your users. And if you want to install updates, or if you want to patch your applications, all you simply do is just launch an image builder from your existing image, patch your applications, and build a new image. And your users who are connecting to that uh, instances using that new image will instantly receive the product updates because they are accessing the application as the web app. So you can completely eliminate the challenges such as the need to uh, patch or install or upgrade your applications on every end user devices in which it is installed. Invest in expensive application deployment tools that allows you to provide support for application deployment. Uh, eliminate investments in expensive client endpoint security tools so as to secure the end user devices in which your application installed so as to not worry about the modern security vulnerabilities to which many devices are exposed. Here are some of the list of customers who are using AppStream in production. Uh, and majority of these customers fall into three buckets. I'll let you see the customer brands for a while. So uh, number one, the first category are customers Enterprise customers who use AppStream to virtualize their business and graphics applications. They want to simplify their app delivery model. They want to empower their employees to be able to use the applications they want for the day-to-day -day work, but use it on any device from anywhere. They can bring their MacBooks, they can bring their Chromebooks, or they can even give inexpensive Chromebook devices, but still be able to have their employees access powerful graphics applications or business and, business and productivity applications. Um, they want the agility. Uh, they want to embrace the modern employee trends, like your workforce is getting remote, your employees are mobile, they're traveling. Uh, working from home is becoming bigger and bigger within many enterprises. For easily embracing these modern IT trends, you need to be agile, both from a competitive perspective and from an employee retention perspective. So that means AppStream provides you those capabilities to be agile, to be able to deliver application updates quicker to your employees, to be able to patch your applications quicker. And performance, as I briefly explained earlier, you can put your apps and data together, thereby eliminate all the data transport latencies that causes a laggy or a slow experience for your users, uh, but still be giving a fluid, interactive application response, even when your employees are using applications that consume large data sets. Management, they want to simplify their app model, delivery model, so they just patch the application one, and just like web apps, for where the companies are delivering their apps instantly to their users, enterprises want to do the same. And most importantly, security. They do not want the apps to be installed on local devices. They do not want the data to be exposed through those applications on local devices. Uh, we all are very well aware of the security challenges we are facing in this day and age. AppStream gives you the flexibility to run these applications from cloud, keeping them extremely safe and secure. The second use cases are software vendors who are building software for customers. They want to accelerate their application adoption. Starting from trials, they want to enable trial users or potential customers to be able to instantly trial their software on their websites with a single click of a button. They don't want their trial users to, to go through downloads of large gigabytes of software, go through complex installation, or even worry about the necessary hardware to try the software. All these causes friction and long delays from trialing your software to buying your software. Software vendors want to eliminate all these frictions and reduce the time it takes for anybody to trial the software to go to a purchase cycle. Uh, and then training workshops. Many software vendors go to conferences. 
they conduct all these pre-built, they have these pre-built workstations where they want to showcase the new product versions or new capabilities. Say, for example, MATLAB wants to go to all the machine learning conferences and show the capabilities of MATLAB in doing machine learning. Earlier, they, used, they, they have to deal with a lot of challenges. They have to go up front, set up these workstations, or they have to ensure that participants in the training workshops have sufficient hardware to try these applications. But now, they simply set up their training workshop using virtual upstream environment, and then they enable the participants to simply walk in with whatever device they have and instantly try the software necessary for the workshop. They want to empower their sales force. They want to empower their sales force, sales specialist, their sales engineers to be able to instantly give demos of new product versions or product updates to any potential customers wherever they are across the globe. And customers want to get the benefits that modern IT companies built for the internet era has, uh, being able to instantly deliver their software to any user across the globe who can access it just with a computer and a broadband connection, to be able to instantly reach global audience. So what they want, however, their current delivery model of traditional box software model doesn't support that. They want to convert their desktop applications into web-based software delivery model, but to do that, they are either tasked with having to rewrite their applications using web technologies, which is a multi-year effort for many software vendors, or some cases, the modern web technologies, especially graphics applications, haven't evolved to give the same performance that a CC++-based application built over several years gives. But AppStream gives you a delivery platform for instantly converting your desktop applications into web applications. So you bring your desktop applications as is, you install it on a Windows environment with an AppStream, and you stream the application as web-based software subscriptions to your users. The third use case is educational institutions, both K-12, lower ed, and higher education. Uh, they want to empower their students to be able to use the applications they need for their coursework from any device, from anywhere. They don't want their students to have to come to a lab, to a specific lab to use the application they want. The labs are overcrowded, and specific applications are only specifically installed in some lab. It creates a lot of challenges for the student to be able to get access to the applications they want. They want to empower, they want to remove the challenges the professors face in conducting experiential lab-based classrooms. Uh, these professors have to schedule their classes around the availability of labs. They're not able to conduct classrooms effectively. So by putting their applications on AppStream, they're able to convert their physical computer labs into virtual computer labs, empowering both their students and their professors to seamlessly participate in lab-based workshops or use the applications they want seamlessly without having to rely on physical computer labs. Now, what are the benefits of AppStream in an enterprise? So, as I explained earlier, AppStream gives you the security. It gives the same performance as if you're interacting with your applications, as if they're natively installed. Every user gets a dedicated streaming instance. We do not put multiple user sessions on the same instance. Thereby, every user gets a consistent performance of interacting with the applications. Your admins can simplify their app delivery model. They can centralize their application management and instantly deliver the patches to anybody who is accessing that application stack. And in addition to that, you get all these benefits with a fully managed service. You don't have to invest in procuring hardware upfront. You don't have to over-provision. You don't have to plan for capacity upfront. Your users get a very simple navigation portal. As you explained, they can get to their applications without having to learn any new behavior. They can access the applications using single sign-on federation, using just their corporate credentials. Within your SAML portal, they can access either web apps like Office 365, Salesforce, things like that, and they can also access their desktop application, giving a unified portal for them for accessing their applications. Flexibility. You can bring both business and graphics application and deliver them to your users. AppStream gives you a wide range of instance choices to choose from. You have standard compute instances that are sufficiently good enough for business applications like SAP GUI or SQL Workbench, simple applications. Or there are instances for compute in intensive application which requires a lot of CPU cycles like Eclipse or Visual Studio. Uh, there, are memory, uh, there are instances for memory intensive applications like R Studio, SAS, MATLAB. And there are also graphics instances. We have a range of graphics instance family that enables you to bring graphics applications and stream them to any device as well. You can connect your identity. 
AppStream for enterprises supports identity-based, identity-provider-initiated federation. This means you can use any provider that you're already using in your enterprise, Okta, Ping, Identity, ADFS, Google SSO, Azure AD, and then seamlessly connect your existing identity provider to AppStream applications. We offer a range of storage options. AppStream instances are non-persistent in nature. This means that uh, the instances are terminated. But however, we provide data persistence option. The users can save their document to a storage solution and have access to the data in subsequent sessions. Uh, we have a built-in storage model called Home Folders, which when enabled gives your users a personal drive. Any documents that is saved to that folder is back to an Amazon S3 bucket in your account. So you control the data. You can set up versioning. You can set up file size limits. You can set up storage limits per user. You control the data. And when the user starts a new session tomorrow, the data that was saved in the previous session is automatically made available in the new session he starts. Uh, you can use Amazon WorkDocs. Uh, by installing the WorkDocs drive client along with your applications, you can enable you, your users to access their WorkDocs content. We provide native storage connectors to Microsoft OneDrive for Business or Google Drive for G Suite. You can enable your users to link their Google, Google Drive or OneDrive using their G Suite credentials or their Office 365 credentials, and they can use their existing files that's already there on one of these storage options. AppStream instances are launched in your VPC and can be domain joined. This also enables you to bring your traditional Windows file shares and integrate that with AppStream applications. You can connect to your network. Uh, AppStream launches in your VPC. That means any network resource is accessible by your application. It can be standalone or domain joined. So some of the key features that are relevant for the enterprises from an admin and a user perspective. We support application settings persistent. You saw a spinner that said loading application settings while I was giving the demo. Uh, similar to data persistence, your user can make changes to their applications, like they can set bookmarks, or they can change user preferences, or they can install additional plugins and extensions. And as long as this data is stored to user's Windows profile, we back the Windows profile as well to an S3 bucket in your account. And when the user starts a new session, we apply the profiles. It includes persistence of both the profile data and also the HKCU registry settings. So if your application stores the changes that the user makes to registry key, that also gets persisted and applied automatically to a new session when the user starts. Your users can change the locale or the region so as to use foreign keyboards, so as to see the text and symbols in their own desired regional format. Your users are able to run multiple applications together just using a browser. But if they want to use advanced features like being able to use multiple monitors, say dual monitor, so as to give more screen space to multitask, or if they want to use USB devices such as Connexion 3D mouse with their graphics applications, uh, or if they want to use keyboard shortcuts seamlessly, like escape key, some of the keyboard shortcuts are intercepted by the browser for its activation of its own menus, like escape key for switching between full screen and normal mode, and it doesn't go to the subsequent session. So these are some of the benefits that you get with AppStream. Now I'm going to hand it off to Catherine from Veolia, who will be talking about their IT transformation and AppStream's part of it. Thank you. 200. 200 applications are running on AppStream at Veolia today. It's a lot, right? What's the story behind that figure? Let's rewind a bit. And first, who is Veolia? Veolia is an international company born in France 165 years ago. We work in the environment. And we share this great and beautiful ambition resourcing the world. That means that we contribute to improving access to resources, to preserve them, and to replenish them. That's our ambition. Today, Veolia represents more than 25 billion revenue, and we are almost 170,000 employees in more than 50 countries. A few words about the three domains that support our business, water, Today, we provide drinking water to about 
100 million users in the world. Waste, we treat almost 50 billion tons of waste yearly. And energy, we operate heating and cooling networks for 560 cities in the world. And in the IT as well, we focus on resourcing the world. And thanks to AWS and its infrastructure and services, we are able to reduce our carbon footprint. To support our business, a digital transformation was mandatory and it's been happening each and every day and for several years and it's everywhere for the customers, for the business, for the employees and of course for the IT. Three projects come to support and accelerate the digital transformation and to create a digital atmosphere in the area. The first one is for the IT. It's called Move to Cloud. And it means that we are using as much as possible SaaS solution and the cloud so that we won't have to manage any data center in the world by 2020. The second one is called Data for Business. It aims to design any new application for the business in the cloud so that we can take advantage of data learning, IoT, um, machine learning, etc. And the third one is called SATAWAD. It's for the employees. SATAWAD. What does it mean? SATAWAD stands for secure, anytime, anywhere, any device. It means that any employee of Veolia can have access to his work environment from anywhere, through any internet access, from any HTML5 browser. In Veolia, we are using Google G Suite collaborative tools for many years. Uh, our messaging system is Gmail. Our authentication system is based on Google accounts. Our data is on Google Drive. So obviously, we have chosen Chromebooks. But what is the direct consequences of Chromebooks? Well, Chromebooks run Chrome. And some of our, of our legacy applications still need heavy clients requiring Windows, so they can't run natively on Chromebooks. So the big challenge of SATAWAD was to make all our applications accessible securely from any device through an internet access. And to do that, we had three solutions. The first one, find an equivalent web applications. It's our priority, SaaS first. The second one, redevelop the application using a web language development. And it, was, it worked well for some of the application, but for others, it was not possible because it was not technically possible or it was not possible in the timing of the project. So my colleagues from the Cloud Platform team, they suggested to test an AWS solution called AppStream. It was one year ago. And so we decided to start a proof of concept on one of the most important applications in Veolia. It's our ERP, it's based on SAP. And so we started the proof of concept. Why did we choose this SAP, this SAP application? Because it was, it's used by 10,000 people in France and it's used by 10,000 more people worldwide. So we knew that it was key for the success of the SATAWAD project. And above all, it was key to convince some skeptical people. So we started very basically with um, one stack, one uh, upstream stack running the SAP GUI client in uh, a VPC in AWS Ireland. And it was connected to our uh, ARP SaaS provider. It worked well, but it was not enough. We wanted it to be more integrated in our environment and more secure. So we configured the SSO authentication based on the Google accounts. So the user can authenticate to AppStream transparently. Then we connected it to the Amazon S3 buckets so that we can 
configure the data persistency. And it was still not enough because our users' data was on Google Drive. So we asked AWS to connect Google Drive to upstream. And they did it. And more recently, we added permission boundaries to filter more efficiently access to the stacks. One role, one stack. So it was a success, and we validated the solution, the upstream solution. Now, where are we? We are one year later. This first stack, SAPGUI stack, is now configured up to 300 users at the same time, always on mode, 24 7. And we have many other customized stacks for specific needs and specific population. For example, we have Office stack, several stacks, running Microsoft Office program, for example, because uh, some users still need to have access to Excel for VBA or macros until they can redevelop them. But on this stack, we can also find Office use uh, applications like Acrobat Reader, Thinkcell, etc. We also have stacks for research and development departments. There is more than 50 applications running on these stacks dedicated to our engineer department or built by them. On these stacks, we can also find MATLAB or RGIS or other things like that. We have graphic tool stacks. It's really easy to build um, a graphic environment on upstream with high CPU, high memory, and high GPU. So on these stacks, we can have Photoshop, AutoCAD, and other things like that. So now, we have achieved the deployment of SATAWAD on the headquarters. It was the first step of the program. And we have 200 applications running on 55 stacks only for the headquarters. Another figure is we have 700 users who have access to at least one stack. And for them, the adoption was quite easy to realize because upstream is easy to use and very intuitive. So we only had a user guide with some explanation about how to connect the Google Drive, how to switch from, um, from an application to another one, or how to print from the upstream, um, for example. We had uh, an on-site dedicated support for the Satawat program. They were able to go and see the user and help them and reassure them. And we have some key users, we call them SATAWAT champions. They were specifically trained on the upstream solution to answer their colleagues' questions. What are the next steps? Well, SATAWAT is going to be launched in each country of the area. Some of them have already implemented some stacks and some applications. But we can know at this moment how many new applications, how many new stacks, and how many users will have access to upstream. But our role, and, and my role as a product manager of, of upstream, is to promote this solution in, in the group, to help other people, to share our experience, to raise a new feature request to AWS, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's it for me at the moment, but I suppose that it will, be, it will give you some ideas about how you can manage this, one, this amazing solution. And I tell you, uh, see you next year for the season two of Upstream at Veolia. Huh? Right. Thanks, Catherine. You saw a flavor of how Upstream is used in a fairly large enterprise with thousands of users and hundreds of applications. I'll briefly go into the, what are the benefits an ISV, or an independent software vendor building consumer software or enterprise software gets by using AppStream. As you saw, you can easily stream apps in a browser. You can in instantly sassify your desktop application as a web application with all the same security, performance, consistency, and scale that an enterprise gets. AppStream offers a very simple launch experience. You can embed AppStream as a part of your existing user authentication workflow. 
Let's say if I am a software user, I go to example, signin.examplecompany.com, I purchased your software as a web subscription, I log in with my credentials that I created with your site, and you can instantly redirect the user by programmatically creating a streaming URL for the user. This is a different model uh, where enterprises use single sign-on, but you can use an API to create a unique streaming URL for a user dynamically at runtime and redirect the user after authentication. The user can access your application over a secure HTTPS channel without having to download any of your software data, without having to install any desktop or browser plugins. The service is fully managed. You can easily stream not just, you can either stream a single application or you can stream your entire software suite. Your users can launch multiple applications within the same session, giving them a very seamless and a consistent performance. And AppStream is available in seven regions across the globe. This means that you can put your AppStream stack in the region that's closest to your users. You can also manage a multi-region deployment, thereby providing ability to reach instant scale, <laughs> enabling any user across the globe to be able to use your application. AppStream streaming protocol is very network adaptive, and it can adapt automatically to network conditions. This means that your users can have a very fluid interactive experience with your application or your consumer software, either on the corporate network, or even if they go home, they can still seamlessly interact with their applications using their home internet connection. No rewrite of your app, which I briefly talked about earlier. Uh, when you're a graphics application, your application probably has tens of millions of lines of code. It's an extremely hard effort, and sometimes it's a technically futile effort to rewrite your existing desktop application based on web technologies. AppStream provides you that fulfillment platform. We have started with Windows. We will add additional server operating systems as we go along, enabling you to bring not just Windows application, but say, for example, Linux application as well into AppStream. You can delight your users by controlling the app experience. You can integrate AppStream, as I said, into your exist existing authentication or programmatic workflows. You can patch the application once, enabling users to instantly deliver their updates. So gone are those days where you have to worry about educating a customer or a new update or uh, prodding your customer to move from one product version to another product version. You build the update once. All your users get the updates instantly. You control your IP. Uh, the applications are not installed on end-user devices. This means they don't have access to your application binaries. They don't have access to the data that's exposed through your binaries. And you can simply safely run your apps on AWS. Your apps are never downloaded. Your data never leaves AWS Cloud. You instrument the user experience. Uh, AppStream can be started with a simple capacity, but you can scale instantly to thousands or hundreds of thousands of users. You can measure the experience. You can start with one instance type, say, for example, a lower end graphics instance type. But if that's not performant enough for your user, you can simply switch your existing streaming environment from one instance type to another instance type with a single click of a button. It allows you to control the performance. You can monitor the performance, and then you can control your capacity using scaling policies and also by easily switching instance type. And you can use AppStream for connecting to other AWS services. For example, using Autodesk application or other applications, you can do pre-visualization or editing of your models or your artwork. And then, since AppStream are connected to your VPC, you can kick off a rendering job that's spawned across a host of EC2 nodes for rendering. And you can come back, and you can visualize the rendered output back within AppStream itself. And similarly, AppStream can be used for giving secure access to other AWS environments, thereby enabling you to uh, instrument different kinds of workflows that needs pre and post visualization or editing needs within AppStream. You connect your identity. You do not have to change anything. Your, your users don't have to create a new user ID or a login. Your users don't have to learn anything new. You can programmatically call the API and connect your users uh, with AppStream. Or if your existing identity is powered by a uh, SAML provider, uh, some, some enterprise, some ISVs also use tools like Okta or Ping Identity to power their identity and authentication. And from there, you can set up seamless authentication using single sign-on experience to AppStream. 
You can apply your branding as you saw in the demo. You, you, you can apply your own design assets. You can provide help links for your users. At the end of a session, you can redirect the users to a product marketing page if you're running trials or training workshops. You can provide a feedback link if you want to get collect user feedback about the streaming experience or things like that. You customize the branding. You provide your users with a look and feel that's familiar to them. And you manage the costs easily because the service scales on demand and then you only pay for the resources you consume. Anything that you do through Management Console can be controlled by our APIs, which is what developers love with AWS services. You can create, control, and manage your resources using AWS SDK or AWS CLI. Now I'm going to hand it off to Todd to talk about AppStream's journey in SolidWorks. Thanks, Vinod. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Um, here we go. You guys can see the animation. Great. So my name is Todd Watts. I'm the R&D director for web applications and cloud solutions. I've been working with the AppStream team for almost two years, providing or working with their services to provide our potential prospects access to our um, SolidWorks desktop tool, uh, which is a Windows-based application. So a little bit about SolidWorks uh, DNA. So we were founded in 1993. Um, by engineers who were 100% dedicated in the engineering and design community. Uh, the, as I mentioned, it's a Windows desktop application that is really super focused on advancing innovation in the 3D CAD and engineering design. We have about 5 million users, 3.2 million members and fans, with over almost 300,000 institutions around the world. We have about 250,000 CAD um, developers and designers who are certified using the software. And we have about 1,300, uh, 1,360 um, partners. So let's talk a little bit about SolidWorks. Um, anybody in the, in the audience here familiar with SolidWorks? Ever use it? So it's you know, a 3D CAD you know, software tool that allows you to design just about anything you see um, as you travel anywhere in the world, as we like to say it. So if you think about it, you know, you're, you're, you're coming up with an idea, a solution, or a product, and you want to go from design to manufacturing. So these are some of the products that um, are designed using our software. Um, anybody recognize the one in the lower middle? It's a, you know, a Roomba. You know, there's probably one running around your house right now, cleaning up dog hair, maybe some Legos, you know, whatnot. <laughs> and uh, that's what pretty much everyone is using our software, you know, to design these, you know, products and um, bring them to the market. So one of our challenges, it was really, the, you know, when we started as a company and, and distributing the software for, you know, trial purposes through our resellers, it took a long time to get the uh, software in their hands. It was on a DVD. It was gigabytes of data. Uh, we also, when the, you know, when the internet you know, providers started coming up with higher bandwidth, you could also go and download the software. But that, that basically took hours you know, to download. Or if you did get the DVD shipped to you and you started installing it on your desktop, it would take you, what, two, three, four, five hours to install the software? I mean, nowadays, Self-fulfillment of trying software is the norm. I mean, how many people here want to wait, you know, two or four hours to download something? I mean, it would take you that long to walk from the top of the strip to the bottom of the strip, and that seems like an incredibly long time. So what we did was we developed what was called a POC and a project around online product trials. So the idea was you go in and you search for SolidWorks because you're interested in trying the product, because it will work through AppStream in a HTML5-based you know, browser, and you can just go to a website, sign up with an account, and seconds later, you, know, you are trying the software. No installation involved, just having you know, a good uh, internet connection. And believe me, internally and through the company, we like to demo the fact that you can try this on a train using a Chromebook. Um, since it's Windows native, it doesn't run on a Mac. But you know, using AppStream, 
allows you to try it in all those different devices. So this is our, you know, this is the landing page that you see when you go to try the software. Test drive SolidWorks anytime, anywhere. We use our CAD premium package um, through various service packs, releases throughout the year to allow our customers to try the latest features. Um, so no waiting required, just an account on our, on our website. So the results of this, um, ever since we started the program, we've seen exponential growth in online trial usage. Uh, it's been a fantastic way to get the product in front of our customers or potential customers as quickly as possible. What's the other challenge that, you know, so that we faced? Well, the problem you know, we were able to solve with AppStream was allowing users to try our beta program. Uh, and also early visibility. So if you are a SolidWorks customer and you are on our subscription, you know, uh, you know, are on our subscription model for the year, you have the ability to go and test out our beta. So this, again, removes that same barrier as we have with prospects who were trying the software. These are already paying customers using our subscription service, and they just go to the website, and for you know, the beta trial period, which varies from three months uh, for the beta on the annual basis, and then for our early visibility every two weeks, you just simply go there and try out the software. Um, you can also see from the slide that there are, you know, are a lot of people are participating in this program, and it's very important to get feedback from our customers when we're going through the beta you know, software development process. So as a bonus to this program and where, you know, and the success that we've enjoyed so far, it's allowed us to sort of, act, you know, accelerate a transactional business on our side. So we're able to gather a lot of data about our customers and how they're using the tool. So for example, commands are, you know, tracked. Um, Add-ons that are being used are tracked. Um, behavioral, we can do analysis around behavioral clustering. Uh, using you know several sources of data, so we take the data that we're getting from AppStream. We also take the information that we get from MySolidWorks, and then we centralize it into a uh, into a, a data warehouse and a you know sort of a big data project where we can mine all of this information. So you see it, you try it, and you know it gives us you know the benefit of having that information, and all this has been possible by working with um, Amazon AppStream. So how do we do it? Well, we took the basic model that AppStream offers. Uh, so right here, walking from left to right, the users will go to My SolidWorks. They'll create a SolidWorks ID. This is all done you know, via you know, secure you know, protocol. Um, and then we leverage the Amazon AppStream services to you, know, you hit the stack from the fleet, from the image builder you know, that we procure and specialize for you know, the product trial purposes. Um, and then everything is obviously all protected behind a private network you know, to our databases and our secure servers on the SolidWorks side. A little bit back to you know, some of the information about the, you know, the data that we're collecting. So, what is this slide you know, really trying to say? And what is really the goal of showing you this information? Well, if you look on the left, we have command, you know, commands used by user. Because it's a trial in a short period of time, they're just uploading a, a, you know, a SLD PRT, a single part. They're probably going around trying you know, to see how it performs through the browser and, you know, and trying to see how the software performs as well. And because it's a short period of time, they focus mostly on you know, that experience. We expect that over time, and, the, you know, and if, if users do shift to more of this, of this model you know, and spend more time using the trial beyond the two days and you know, several hours that we allow them to use it, we'll see something like large assemblies start to have more clicks and more time spent using the software. And the same thing with drawings. So that's sort of the goal of you know, where we'd like to get when we increase the uh, product trial usage. And then, you know, on, on the other end of the behavioral clustering, we're able to use all the data we're collecting just to sort of understand and monitor, 
you know, where the bulk of the, you know, where the bulk of the usage is going. So with assembly configurations, we can see it's sort of up in the left quadrant. So it's not clustered with the other, you know, commands and the other activity that the users are using. But the fact that we even have this information and we're able to gather all this information will really help us make decisions on how we advance the product, make feature changes, and then also, you know, give new things, you know, to potential customers in the future. <clears throat> so the other important metric to keep in mind is that because over a 30-day period, we're able to, you know, increase the conversion, you know, of users, you know, getting to the purchase process because they can actually try the software quickly. So in the, on the left, you're seeing where there's all the activity, and as they funnel down through the sales cycle, it's a, it's a much shorter cycle than it has been in the past because we can instantly provide you the uh, trial online. So really the key takeaways for us um, in the, you know, as far as accelerating our business with this is that it shortens the sales cycle and the, you know, the efficiency to you know, interact with the customer or potential customer. As I mentioned earlier, self-fulfillment of trying software, everybody tries it online and tries it instantly. So that's the norm. So back in you know, 10 years ago when we were shipping DVDs or you know, having everyone always do a download, that is no longer the norm and this is the norm. Um, it also accelerates in getting more prospects into our sales pipeline. So that's another added benefit. And then also, since we house the product trial on my SolidWorks and we include training and tips and tricks on how they use the software, it's a you know, nice little ecosystem and community-based area where people can you know, learn more about the software, um, which we think is another added benefit. So thank you, and if you or anyone in the audience have any questions about how we did this and any of the other you know, details, I'd be happy to share them with you after the presentation. Thank you. We have about another eight minutes left, so we can take questions. Uh, so what's next? This is the pace of innovation, some of the features. Okay. These details are available on our product <coughs> website. Mm -hmm. You can take a look at yes. the features that we have launched in 2017, okay. 2018. No. Uh, we have an online experience okay. where you can try some of the applications. We have a getting started guide that helps you to build your app scheme environment in a few hours. We have application I'm deployment perfect. guides for specific yeah, applications always, uh, for you to try. Know, and also we have a technical blog dedicated to AppStream to follow some of the best practices. We regularly you publish blog posts no, on best practices and procedures. No Thank you, and please complete the session survey in the mobile application.